Patty Simpson with Simpson Math. In this video, we're going to graph a polynomial that has irrational roots. In this particular case, we have a quadratic uh, function. And this quadratic function, the way we're going to begin is as we do with all of our polynomials by looking at the end behavior. So our end behavior, the first thing we look at is the leading coefficient. Our leading coefficient here is 1. What we care about that 1 is the fact that it is positive. The positivity tells me that on the right, it is going to rise. Then, um, the degree of the polynomial is 2. What we care about that 2 is that it is even. And that evenness tells me that it's going to be the same on the left as it is on the right. So since it rises on the right, it's also going to rise on the left. Then we know because our degree is 2 that we will have one turn because we have one less turn than the degree and that we have two roots um, to this quadratic. So we can even give a little sketch. It's going to rise on the right, rise on the left, have one turn. Our ending function should look something like that. So that's step one of finding in graphing this quadratic. Then step two is we're going to look for the, for the y-intercepts. The y-intercepts, remember to find those, we just substitute in 0 for x. So everywhere I see an x up there, I'm just evaluating that function where x is 0. So 0 squared minus 4 times 0 minus 7, and that equals a negative 7. Remember that your y-intercept is a point, so I should write it as a coordinate, 0, negative 7. Then I'm going to find my x-intercepts. Remember to find your x-intercepts. Our y value is equal to 0. So I'm just going to substitute in 0 for y. So 0 equals x squared minus 4x minus 7. I have a quadratic that's set equal to 0. I can try to factor it. I would use my AC method, say my A is 1, my C is 7. 1 times 7 is a negative 7. Factors of negative 7 that add up to be a negative 4. Oh no, there aren't any factors of negative 7 that add up to be a negative 4. So in order to solve this, I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula. So I break out the quadratic formula as x equals x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And I'm just going to use this to solve for my x-intercepts. My a, my b in this case is a negative 4. My b squared then is also that negative 4 squared. Minus 4 times my a is 1. My c is a negative 7. All over 2 times my a again, which is 1. Then I just simplify. A negative times a negative makes that a positive. Plus or minus the square root of, this is 16. Negative times a negative makes that a positive 28. All over 2. 16 plus 28 gives me 44. Again, over 2. If I simplify that, that's 4 times 11. The square root of 4 is 2. So the, simplifying the square root of 44 ends up being 2 on the square root of 11. Separate those two, and I end up with 2 plus or minus the square root of 11. Uh, I have a, a previous video where we've gone through this process a little slower, so if that was a little bit fast, look at the previous video on the quadratic formula, and I, I worked through this, this problem. So my x-intercepts here, there are two different ones. The first one's at 2 plus the square root of 11, comma, my y value is 0. So this is my x value, and that's my y value. I also have one at 2 minus, so there's a plus or a minus, the square root of 11, and 0. So there are my x-intercepts for this graph. Then I'm going to find the axis of symmetry. 
Remember with our quadratics, we can find that axis of symmetry. And the axis of symmetry, we use x equals negative b all over 2a. So it's just this first part of the quadratic formula where we've done the negative of a negative 4 all over 2. So in the end, we should end up with this 2. If I plug in or substitute in those values, x equals, well, the negative b all over 2 times a, I should end up with that 4 over 2, which is just 2. So this number out front and my axis of symmetry should always be the same because the formula just comes from that quadratic formula. So my axis of symmetry is going to be that vertical line where x equals 2. I know that my quadratic is going to fold around that line. Then I know that my vertex is on that line. So to find the vertex of a quadratic, we just take that value, our axis of symmetry, and we substitute it into the function and find our y value where um, x is my axis of symmetry, that x value. So um, 2 squared is 4, a minus 8, minus 7. So I have a negative 15, a plus 4 is a negative 11. So I know my vertex is a point on the graph at 2, negative 11. Now I can graph this function. I'm going to graph my quadratic function here with these irrational roots. And I'm going to show you how we go about graphing these irrational roots. So I'm going to draw myself a coordinate plane. And I know, um, I'm going to put the points on that I know. Here's 0, negative 7. So my y-intercept is at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I need to make it down to 11. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 2 is the vertex. I know that my axis of symmetry goes here through where x equals 2. That's my axis of symmetry. So my, my graph is going to fold along there. So I can even look and say, well, I know there's going to be another point. If there's a point here and I fold it, I know there's going to be another point on the other side the same distance away. So this one's one, two spots away. I know there's going to be another one at one, two spots away. Now, I need to graph this um, 2 plus the square root of 11. Well, we're going to begin at this 2, and then I'm going to go to the right, because that's what plus tells me to do, is go to the right, square root of 11. In a previous video, we saw how to see about how much that is, but we know that that square root of 11 is between the square root of 9, which equals 3, and the square root of 16, which equals 4. So the square root of 11 is somewhere in between those, closer to 3 than it is to 4, about 3.2-ish, uh, somewhere like that. So I'm going to start at my 2, and I'm going to go to the right 3 and a little bit. So from this 2, I'm going to go over 1, 2, 3, and a little bit, so that my x-axis is about, my x-intercept is about right there. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. I'm going to start at 2 and go backwards 3 and a little bit because that square root of 11 is still 3 and a little bit. So I start here at 2, and I'm going to go to the left 3 and a little bit. So start at 2, and you go back 1, 2, 3, and a little bit. These two should be the same distance from my axis of symmetry. If I fold on the axis of symmetry, they should meet. Then I'm going to connect my dots to get my quadratic function here graphed so that I have a nice parabola shape, which is what we said it was going to look like in the beginning. Then I'm going to label each one of my points so that I have 2, negative 11 is my vertex. And 0, negative 7 is my y-intercept. I have this additional point that we found over here at 4, negative 7. And then 
to label my x-intercepts, I'm going to label them with their exact values. So this one is 2 plus the square root of 11 comma 0. And this one is 2 minus the square root of 11 comma 0. And I have graphed this quadratic function with those irrational roots. Math made simple at Simpson Math. Thanks for watching.